Hey everybody, Jason here at Alorium Technology. In this video, I want to talk to you about a potential solution I've found that I think has addressed the maddening FTDI USB bus contention issues that people seem to run into with Mac OS specifically. And that's for any board using FTDI chip, whether it's our Accelerate board or SparkFun Red board, or there's some other boards that are out there that use it too. There seems to be this very common problem of bus contention, with USB and having some issues with the drivers get hung up and not be able to use those ports again. And I've bumped into that myself. I know other people on our team here at Alorium has bumped into this. We have customers that have had this problem. And there are some proposed remedies out there. There are some things that I've tried that didn't work, but I bumped into something earlier this week that seems to have taken care of the problem. Although I'm skeptical because I thought some things were fixed before in the past and they weren't. I at least wanted to share in case it might help some of you out. So far, so good with what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to convert over so you can see my screen and we'll talk a little bit more about what I've done. Okay, so first of all, the problem that we're talking about here is this issue of USB ports or the serial ports across USB talking to a board uh, getting hung up or disappearing or however it looks for your particular situation. What it looks like for me, and this is what I've seen with other people as well, is that when you go and select your port so you can talk to the board, You'll see this show up on a Mac as CU USB serial and then some alphanumeric string there that identifies a specific connection to the board. And so you plug it in, this seems to work. The failure symptom that I would see is that if I unplugged this and then went to plug it back in, this port would just be gone. It wouldn't work anymore. And we saw this, like I said, it was me, it was other people on our team and, and customers seeing the same thing. So. Power, take it apart, you know, unplug it so that you could plug things into it or change whatever without it being powered up, plug it back in, and then this port is gone. And then it just, there's nothing you can do. You can't connect to it. Now, if I disconnected the USB from the port on my laptop and plugged it into a different port, it would work. Or even if you got a USB hub and you just sometimes as simple as moving it to a different slot on the USB hub, it would work. But eventually it would go away again. And I would run out of USB ports to try, and I have to reboot my machine, and then it would work again. So this seems like a common thing. If you do a little Google searching, you'll find that a lot of people have run into this issue with multiple varieties of boards. And one of the things that people point to very often is an application note or a document actually from uh, FTDI talking about how to install and uninstall drivers for Mac OS X. And it looks like this was last updated about last year, about a year ago. And so I went to this a few months ago thinking, well, okay, I'm going to figure out what's going on here. Because one of the things I learned in reading through some of the form answers is that Mac OS at one point in time did not support FTDI. And you needed to install these drivers for it to work. As they have come along with further releases of, and upgrades to the operating system, they started supporting natively FTDI. And that started causing some contention issues between the the third-party drivers and the native drivers as part of Mac OS. And so one of the things suggested to try in the forums was to actually remove the FTDI drivers, reboot, and just allow the OS drivers to work that are part of the operating system. So that's what I tried to do. And actually, this document has a nice description of where to go and what to do. So section four on uninstalling FTDI drivers. And so I did that. And I'm running, actually, I'm running OS Sierra because I tend to be an early adopter. So I jumped down here to section 4.2 and I followed the instructions. I went out to library extensions and I deleted it just like it said. Now, that didn't help. It didn't fix my problem. I still bumped into this issue, which was me, which was really frustrating. So I just dealt with it. But recently I've been putting together more demos and I've been doing more things with Accelerate and, and we've got other things coming along that I've been working on. And I'm bumping into this issue and I'm tired of rebooting my laptop regularly just so I can get USB ports to talk to the boards again. So I went back to this document and I noticed that in section 4.1, it talks about installing 10. how to uninstall from 10.3 to 10.8. Now 10.8 was Mountain Lion and I'm almost certain when I bought this laptop, it was even pre-Mountain Lion. Could be. That would have been early 2013 with this particular laptop. So... I thought, well, you know, I've followed an upgrade path ever since I bought this laptop, and maybe these directories, or I'm sorry, these drivers are living out in this old directory path because there was a transition after Mountain Lion where they started putting 
the drivers out in just slash library extensions instead of system library extensions. And I thought, well, maybe I, maybe it's out there. So I, I went out and looked, and sure enough, I was able to find it. Here's a, a quick clip of a video that I took earlier this week as I was searching around. And here you can see that that file exists out in the system library extensions. And so what I did is I removed it from there as well. Now it's no longer here in system library extensions. And it's also no longer out in library extensions, where the, is, which is the new location for it. And so I rebooted my laptop on Tuesday. And I've been doing a lot of stuff with our Accelerate boards these last few days, and I haven't run into this problem yet. I've purposely been trying to plug in, unplug, unplug, plug in, and just see if I can get it to fail. And so far, so good. It hasn't been. So one thing I want to interject here as I was re-listening to the video, so I'm going to insert this in, is that if you see here, you do need to be root user in order to take the uh, files out of the system library extensions. So if you've never done that on your Mac before, there's a link in the description as well, so you can do that. But you do need to be root in order to take it out of the system library directory. I'd like to encourage you, head on out to this link, which I will put down below in the description of this video, and follow these instructions if you're bumping into this problem, because it may be the case, if you have a Mac that you have gone an upgrade path that is something that is 10.8 or lower, up through where you are today, you might still have this driver lingering around out there and maybe that's causing contention. Now, I don't pretend to be an expert on how the operating system works for Mac and it may be that I'm completely off in the weeds here. So time will tell, but I am open to your feedback on this. I'd love to hear if you try it and it works. That would be great to know because this has caused a lot of headaches for me and for other people and it seems to be working. And if you've bumped into this and this can help you as well, I just wanted to let you know about it. So please try it out. Give me some feedback. Would love to hear your results. And I hope this helps you. All right. Have a great day. Thanks.